Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash inside. Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Monday, a clap for Star Citizen. AKA the game you wasted 50 bucks on in 2012 and you're still annoyed about it. The game seems to have hit a milestone as the most expensive game ever made, despite the years of work and still not a complete game to show for it. So congratulations, Star Citizen. But it gets worse, even more unsettling. It seems like people are giving more money to Star Citizen than ever. I looked up its parent company site, Robert Space Industries. The game has now raised over $300 million from more than 2.7 million backers who all must feel very, very good about their investment right now. So $300 million from 2.7 million backers, but the final total is higher than that because apparently raising hundreds of millions from backers isn't enough. I mean, no, in this no, economy. No. But it's not even just backers. They've been selling spaceships to people who've already backed the game. And yep. then Kotaku Australia reported earlier this year that the game has raised another 63 million from outside investors over the years. So the running total is currently more like at least 363 million, probably more than that. Not that they have that cash on hand because they most certainly have burned through. It's all yeah, gone. Yeah. It's yeah. gone. And it seems like the pace of crowdfunding has actually increased over the last few months. Maybe people are hoping they'll get it by the time quarantine is over or something. The game had hit 200 million raised in November 2018, 250 million in December of last year. People are just quarantined at home. They have nothing to do, so they're just throwing money at Star Citizen. Just flush it down the toilet. At least that way, someone might find it. There's no light at the end of this tunnel. You're I not know. gonna get your game. At this point, I feel like Star Citizen is just a big ball of money that keeps rolling around the world, picking up more and more bills as it goes. It's like Katamari Damacy, except not, because Katamari Damacy is an actual game that released, so. And if we look at the all-time most expensive games to develop, at least the ones we know about. We're not platinum gamers. We haven't gotten into the secret club yet. <laughs> right. Star Citizen has now beat out the previous record holders, Grand Theft Auto V, Modern Warfare 2, and Star Wars The Old Republic. I think yeah. GTA V may have made its money back by now, but I'm not... I think, 100%. So. I think you're right. Yeah, so it's gotten to the point where you you have to get outside of the game industry to find something comparable to how expensive Star Citizen is. Avengers Endgame cost about 350 million to make. That's not including marketing costs, which is usually I think about the same amount as production. Yeah, it was a lot. But yeah, it's now its budget is now up there with the biggest Hollywood blockbuster of all time. But at this point, Star Citizen has been development for nearly a decade. It started in 2012 as a crowdfunding backed project. Some people think development actually started a little bit earlier, maybe in 2011. But the project was to make an immersive space sim slash combat game. Had a legendary developer, Chris Roberts of Wing Commander running the show. Everybody was stoked. People jumped on board to support it. And it was huge news. Back when I was a regular old journalist, I remember writing about this. Uh-oh. Oh, kitty. He just walks around meowing so f loudly yeah like oh my goodness and your cat does glow like that in real life we had it treated <laughs> with chemicals and the scope of the project was massive probably a little too massive turns out promised a level of depth and quality that had never been seen before its kickstarter page said star citizen is a destination not a one-off story that's a warning sign right there <laughs> It's a complete universe where any number of adventures can take place, allowing players to decide their own game experience. Basically the thing that video games have been promising for like 10, 15 yeah. years now. Yeah. And like- That whole last game you'll ever need. I actually yeah. like buying games, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not looking for that. But Connor, you exclusively played Dwarf Fortress. Oh, I didn't know that. No, I'm just he doesn't. <laughs> It promised that you could play as a smuggler, a pirate, a merchant, a bounty hunter, a Jedi. And Wait, that's two. copy protected. Not a Jedi. Laser sword wielder. <laughs> Enlist as a pilot, protecting the borders from outside threats. It was gonna be glorious, Ooh. massive. It was gonna be a PC only extravaganza that you could lose yourself in. What could go wrong? Well, turns out everything. If you only yeah. had one shot. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. One game for the rest of your life. <laughs> the music, the moment, putting all my money in. Go fund me. The game made lots of headlines for its eye popping funding totals, some of them penned possibly by our own Brian Gar, but almost immediately things got complicated. Star Citizen actually split into two games. <laughs> That's a good sign. One being a single player campaign called Squadron 42 that's starring big name talent like Mark Hamill, Gillian Anderson, Gary Oldman, and others. I think Mark Strong is in there. That trailer is hilarious because it is yeah. so dramatic. We will not lose the system. 
<laughs> All right, Gary. <laughs> yeah. They put out that trailer. It looked cool, I guess, but yeah, very, very serious. That was in 2018, and that's been about it. A roadmap from the developers said they don't expect Squadron 42 to go into beta until sometime this year. Yeah, but then I looked up the roadmap, and they've stopped updating it. <laughs> and they, they sort of posted an update saying it, that roadmap didn't accurately represent development on a AAA chapter-based story-driven game like SQ42. So where they're going, they don't need roadmaps, apparently. They went on to write, we want to be clear, progress on Squadron 42 is happening, and we're broadly happy with that progress, but we know that our roadmap is not reflecting that progress. I feel like you're doing... Bernie Obama. I was trying to do Obama, yeah. But you heard kind of the mealy mouth of Bernie Sanders. They got enough money, I feel like they could hire the real Barack Obama. Now, folks, we want to be clear. Uh, we know that our roadmap is not re it's not reflecting that progress. But we know that our roadmap is not reflecting no, that no, progress. No, 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 that's, no, that's, that's the Obama. Wrong that's no, Barack it's Obama. not. Yes, I own three ships. One is in my home base. <laughs> One is in the outer reaches. It is very shabby. It's absolutely fabulous what they're doing with this game, Star Citizen. I've given a lot of money myself. Tremendous game. Not really a qualified statement at no. all. You know, all this talk of statements has me thinking of another S word, a word that gets me all hot and bothered. We're Samoa? Talking about, <laughs> we're talking about stamps, Patrick, because they rule. Oh. Thank you to stamps.com for sponsoring today's episode. Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is sponsored by stamps.com. For all our sakes, we need to avoid crowds any way we can right now. But what if you need to go to the post office? What if you need postage to send out letters and packages? Don't worry, stamps.com is here to help. With stamps.com, you can print postage on demand and skip those lines and crowds at the post office. Plus, you can actually save some money with discounts that you can't even get at the post office. And as if that wasn't enough, Stamps.com also offers UPS services and discounts of up to 62% and no UPS residential surcharges. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Wow. Stamps.com brings all of the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer in the safety and comfort of your own home, office, or anywhere else you're hunkering down right now. I'm in a home office bedroom. It's the new craze. Whether you're a small business sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or you're just working from home and you need to mail stuff, stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Simply use your computer to print official US postage 24 seven for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you wanna send. Once your mail is ready, just leave it for your mail carrier, schedule a free package pickup, or drop it in a mailbox. No human contact required, it is that simple. And like I said, with stamps.com, you get great discounts too. Five cents off every first class stamp and up to 62% off shipping rate. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, especially now, saving you time, money, and keeping you safe in these wild times. Right now, our viewers get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in inside. That's stamps.com. Enter inside. Stay safe, my friends. Happy mailing. Okay, that brings us to the other game in the Star Citizen package, an MMO that's known as the Persistent Universe. <laughs> it's a great name. Right. No wonder it raised all that money. So what's its status? Well, at the end of April, the team put out its so-called Alpha 3.9 update of the game, which added some new locations. Oh, and a prison uniform for your character to wear when they're incarcerated. Okay. Cool. Sir, you are under arrest for raising $300 million for a fake game. You will be encased in a time jail on Europa. <laughs> okay, but to be fair, the Persistent Universe is somewhat playable. They should call it the somewhat playable universe. They have built out its first system with multiple planets on it, so they are making stuff that is true, but mm -hmm. it is a far cry from the vast scope that was promised in the game's original pitch because they promised a bunch of star systems, not just a bunch of planets to explore on your very own ship or ships, your own fleet. What, whatever they can yeah. sell you, they will. But needless to say, we are not there yet. The Persistent Universe game still has no release date and some have wondered if it'll ever come out. Mm -hmm. Not at this rate. Gary Oldman's calling up Chris Roberts and like, I was wondering about that video game we made together. Is that coming <laughs> out? But there's always that lingering question surrounding Star Citizen. How much money is enough? If it's already the most expensive game ever, why do they keep raising more? But yeah, last year those questions came to the forefront after Forbes came out with that expose on the game's development. Uh, and guess what? It, it's just as big of a mess as you thought. People huh. who worked on it said it had massive feature creep. No shit. 
Chris Roberts had lost control of it all. They said that at the end of 2017, he just had $14 million in the bank, although obviously they've raised more. So yeah, it's just this churn of money. And then there was a messy lawsuit between Star Citizen's developer Cloud Imperium Games and Crytek over the use of the Cry Engine. Crytek argued that its license with Cloud Imperium only gave the Star Citizen developer the right to use Cry Engine for one game. And of course, now there are two games, which Crytek argued violated its license. The two sides finally settled that lawsuit earlier this year, but you have to believe that it involved maybe some costly litigation. Meanwhile, the development drags on. And to their credit, the developers are releasing a regular series of communications called Roadmap Roundups, detailing what they've been adding to the game and the thought processes behind it. The last one felt weird, though. It was dated June 12th, and the developers said, felt like they had a little guilty conscience here. They said it was part of an effort to make our communications more transparent, more specific, and more insightful for all of you who helped to make Star Citizen and Squadron 42 possible. I mean, they do have these little updates like, oh, we did this and this guy has a new outfit. But after all these years, it just feels like the pace at which they're releasing content is just far too slow. And in the meantime, they keep raising money and selling spaceships to their players for even more money. And this is where we should add that the game does have a community of players who are devoted to the project. Subreddit has more than 200,000 members, which I mean, that's fine. More right. power to you, I guess. Sure. But others have given up hope. A few years ago, a man who spent nearly four thousand five hundred dollars on the game sued the developer in small claims court saying he'd become disillusioned with the delays broken promises and changes in scope a court later denied his claim <laughs> too bad and others who say they've backed the game now say they've also lost patience over on reddit user xp3000 wrote that as long as people keep giving them money for jpegs of spaceships they have oh. zero incentive to ever release i gave them forty dollars eight years ago and i have zero expectation i'll ever see the original single player game that i paid for. This last quote is the whole reason I wrote this story. This is from another user, Falcon Prawns, but they put the game's long development time in perspective, writing, I bought a plane in 2012, expected to play the full game in 2015. Since then, I've finished my education, become a full-time teacher, gotten married, had two kids. Both of them have started kindergarten. I don't think I'll ever get to play the single player game. God damn, Falcon Prawns, <laughs> putting it oh, in wow. perspective. Perspective. <laughs> it's like Interstellar. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Chris Roberts is peering out from a bookshelf screaming. No! This man's whole career is about to be ruined. Sorry, it says it says corporate parent, not partner. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Woo! don't you feel stupid? Most of that new haul is from player backers, but the game's corporate parent, Cloud Imperium Games, recently announced that it raised more than $17 million from